you're so upset. I know. You're, oh, it's okay. All right, we're going to, uh, this is a wild caught. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, there's the glottis. That's the breathing tube that attaches itself to the trachea, and that allows these guys to breathe while trying to uh, swallow a large meal. She's really got um, a, a very reactive disposition. That's her fang right there. I'm just looking at her mouth. All right, her mouth looks good. So this is a wild-caught animal that's been going through worming, but it has not been an active feeder for me. And wagglers are very, generally very uh, docile and placid, you know, venomous. You, you certainly must respect them. They're still... <laughs> good thing it's got a prehensile tail. Wow. It just shows you how much it hates the camera. So one thing you notice, I use a stack of towels, like six towels, and it softens the table that I'm working on. I don't like to write on a piece of paper if it's on a hard, sur hard surface. I want to put a couple pieces underneath it for some reason. I'm just that way. Uh, same with this thing. I want to be uh, kind to the animal because I'm going to uh, force myself on it and impose my will on this poor animal. And the animal is going to think that this is a horrific, uh, you know, life-threatening situation with this light and all the infrared coming in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pin the head nicely. I know. Okay, so let him nail the towel. It's a, basically, I call that letting its yayas out. So, my goodness. You know, it's interesting. So, I don't see any venom. So, largely defensive. Okay, guys. This is where I can take less liberties. So, we have a front forward fanged viper here. They sometimes can shut their mouth with their fangs out and they can really get you. All right, I gotta feed you, hi buddy. Okay, okay. All right, so this animal fighting me good. All right, so keeping that body straight, same rules apply. So what I'll do for safety, I'm gonna take the nose, point the nose forward of my rodent. This is going to be a defensive response. So there you go. There's the little fangs. See them, Donnie? Yeah. Look how long that fang is. Catching, catching birds or something? Well, it's just, you know, whatever it's going to. Yeah, so you need a little bit longer. The theory is you need a little bit stronger mouth with uh, real powerful muscles in the back for when they bite down, when you're dealing with things that have fur. I mean, fur and uh, feathers, but feathers really pushing it through. So this is a really appropriate sized food animal. So right there, nice and wet, nice and wet right here. There we go. Okay, same thing's gonna apply. Ready, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let go. Ready? Yep. Okay, hold on. This right here. Okay. So we're going to work with that tail, otherwise we're going to get the, I'm going to throw that up. So keep, so it wants to, if I, come on, I'm going to work that tail. Yeah, come on, come on. We're going to come over here, put on the ground, once again a towel. So right here, we're initiating, this is such a good reptile hack, initiate crawling there you go see the tongue boom we're good things are good and what i'll do is uh you leave him in this space so remember one thing we're now towering over this animal this is really putting this animal's uh defensive you know 
response on high alert because it's very aware that we're here and we're towering over it. So this is in a really bad place for this animal that is naturally inclined to be above us, up in the canopy. So this is just, you know, a little short matter. But you want to be aware that everything you're doing with these guys has some level of um, impact. So when I do this kind of rubbing and stuff, causing the animal to just use its brain so the, the tongue is coming out, it's flicking, and it's taking all this information in. This is not a bad thing. These animals are tactile. Even those animals venomous, your touch can still influence uh, behavioral change, and you need to understand that. Such a wonderful creature. Look, he is no, just, he's, he's a wonderful sheep. I like to assign <laughs> genders, I guess. Yeah. Okay, this is, this is great. So we're going to put that animal back in his cage. Here we go. Everything's good. Lots of tongue flicking. Nice positive. Into your little cagey. Hi. Okay. This is good. So one thing, I'm allowing the animal to kind of go back into its enclosure on its own terms without, you know, scaring it too much because I realized what I just did was something that the animal did not enjoy. But ultimately, this animal is going to be a far happier captive once it realizes that we're not there to hurt it and uh, it can eat and all that stuff so This animal, uh, so he's still got the little, little lump in his neck. So this means I am very threatened, and it's like I'm losing my cookies. Everything's gone. So I can, I can actually take this animal down a notch by light handling. I'm getting the animal to think. And now it's going to just start assessing what's going on. Long tongue flick. Hi, buddy. Do you want to eat a wax worm? I've never been offered a wax worm. That's actually a good response. We might want to try something. So what I do, put it like a bit for a horse. You can see the glottis. Hold on one sec. I wasn't prepared. I don't like that size horse hat. Okay, buddy. Sleep like that. Waxworm. Try to get it right back of the throat. So we're gonna do. I'm sorry, waxworm. I just have never done this, so let's see what happens. So now we're just gonna wait to see if you that little movement. Oh, whoop. see where they do that thing with their their jaw. And we're just triggering a feed response. Oh yeah, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good thing. 
but it's a good little quick way to get a little bit of uh, meat and potatoes into that snake. Kevin, you're keeping your monitor in too small of an enclosure. It, somebody just brought it to me. Yeah, this this exhibit A, I just had a, they brought me, its name is Precious, and it's the water monitor, and Precious lately has not been doing well, as I'm understanding. So Precious is not wanting to bask, not wanting to eat, acting depressed, maybe trying to bite, and acting skitty. So uh, I'm already looking at Precious right off the bat. Um, weight is, is not where you'd normally want to see it, so she's a little on the thin side. Uh, but more importantly, her face is, uh, looks, yep, there it just is. looks wrong. It's not, it's not mating right. Um, so this, I probably would say that this is a uh, metabolic bone disease. So what is metabolic bone disease? What is it guys? So imagine you're a predator and you're going out there and you're catching whatever you can stuff down your throat and you eat it. When you digest it, as you're breaking down that material, your stomach produces acids. So now you're digesting that meal. Once you've digested that meal, how do you neutralize those acids? Because those acids are not probably great for you, especially when you're not digesting anything because they're gonna sit there and they're gonna to start to ulcerate your stomach and all that. So what your body does, your body has to neutralize the acids. And this is also applicable to humans. And it uses things like calcium, which is alkaline and base. So what happens, this animal has all this acid in the stomach, it takes the calcium, the alkalinity base from your bones. The bones are all these little pores of calcium and magnesium and just uh, alkalinity and it pulls those and then that neutralizes the acid. That process is called metabolic acidosis. And it happens with people, happens with a true carnivore. This is a, an absolute meat eater, very acidic stomach, but it comes with a price. Day-to-day -day life uses calcium for nerve communications. Uh, growth uses calcium for further bone strength and size and formation. But as this animal's eating things, it also takes that calcium. It doesn't just use it for bone growth or for nerve communications in the metabolic system. It also uses it for neutralization of stomach acids as you digest. When this happens and things go wrong, we get something called metabolic bone disease. And this causes uh, suffering, malformation, as the animal's growing, uh, quality of life, depression, failure to thrive, all these different things. And it also can uh, give lifelong uh, mal like malformed bones, like just structural problems. All right, so I've never touched this animal, so whatever. It doesn't even react. So I usually just... And I know people want to see us do a lizard socialization video. This is not it. Oh, this is metabolic bone disease all day long. Hi, sweetie. I love you. Oh, my God. So look at, look at the mandible, the lower mandible right below the eye, and there's almost a hinge. Okay. So I'm going to tell you, without even touching this animal, I am going to have a very soft, non-structural jaw. So the lower and upper mandible are not strong because there's not enough calcium to actually create a uh, healthy bone. Man, look right here, there's a divot. So I got stronger bone here and then I go to this. So every time she's eating, this has become a hinge. So this is totally being challenged. So this, this is just a simple indication of improper husbandry. Means that just things aren't quite right. And we, we've already um, talked to the uh, person who actually takes care of the animal, not the actually direct owner. And uh, Tammy's already uh, gone through, we want to uh, get really broad spectrum lighting. So we want to have UV light, which is then going to activate D3 hormones in the blood, which allows the calcium in the diet to be absorbed and used for bone growth, metabolism, nerve communication. And so we want to make sure that the basking temperatures are something like this, 130 degree hotspot. Basking, ambient. 82, 84, heating pattern underneath. So after it eats and ingests a big meal, it must be able to digest. If you take this animal and let it digest and it's cold, the food will rot in the gut. It can make the animal sick. It can get a very 
deadly bacterial infection or it'll just throw up and it'll get uh, pancreatitis. But in this case, we are going to give it a big influx of uh, nutrients and calcium with D3. So uh, NeoCal Glucon, if you brought it to a vet, we're gonna use some like uh, rescue cal. So we're gonna wanna bring in some, um, we wanna get fat and protein into this as well as calcium, D3 and some other uh, vitamins. And uh, we're just gonna basically provide the fuel that the bones are needing to uh, start building a stronger uh, jaw. I mean, the rest of the bones are gonna be the same way. You're not gonna be able to feel it right now, but this is very, very uh, obvious. So we're gonna keep this animal for a little bit. We're gonna uh, fix this up. That's a, this is a girl. So and, it's not beyond help? No. Okay. She's always gonna be a little bit deformed though. Okay. So uh, one thing I can tell you, metabolic bone disease, sometimes you'll get, let's see iguanas with like big giant uh, legs and big jaw and what that is you get this fibrous tissue which is trying to since there's no real strong bone uh, formation they'll get this fibrous tissue and that's the body trying to uh, provide support for it and it's part of the you know healing process but ultimately long term that's going to create uh, all sorts of malformities Good catch, Kevin. yeah I can't just feed my, my, my monitor chicken nuggets I have to no no. So if I fed this animal chicken, chicken flesh all the time, something like this is going to happen really fast. So if I feed this animal a lot more whole food, so it has like a, a whole rodent that has bones and internal organs and all that different stuff, that really helps the bones a lot. But a lot of times it's easier for us to feed it scrambled eggs, ground turkey, fish and all that. It doesn't have a lot of bones. If we're not properly including calcium with D3, maybe... Uh, we don't have good UV. So if I didn't really have much UV light, I'd always want to make sure my calcium includes D3. D3 is essential for the absorption and utilization of the calcium in the diet. If I don't elevate the D3 hormones, calcium is ingested, goes through the animal, and then it leaves the body without much benefit to the animal. Uh, if I take an animal like this and I add ultraviolet light, so the spectrum that's imitating the sun, uh, we're gonna help elevate the D3 hormones. Once the D3 hormones are elevated, the calcium that's available to it in its diet will then be utilized. So it's really, this is really about, this is like really simple, basic um, semantics, so to speak, for reptiles. So if you have a beer dragon, you have leopard gecko, you have a veiled chameleon, you have uh, rachidactylus, you have lichianus, all these different uh, lizards and stuff like that. You're always aware of your calcium and your D3 levels and other vitamins too, because it's not just calcium and D3. But uh, yeah, this is gonna be something we're gonna be able to come back to and see what we did. All right. Kevin has a secret admirer. I, you know, guys, I don't want to forget people that send me emails. We got a, I got a very interesting email about a week and a half ago about a guy who's you know understanding all sorts of my mental, psychological problems. Right now it's really tough, guys, with COVID and all the problems. And I know all of you are also dealing with your whole bunch of other problems and probably some of their problems are more extraordinary than mine. I have a very large building. I have so many animals here and all that to me represents a liability, which means the care of the animals and the health of the animals and what I, I'm doing this because I love animals. That's the basis of my existence. If it's a monarch butterfly, if it's a bunny rabbit, wild bunnies outside that I'm always trying to help. I, I, anybody who knows me knows I'm a fanatic and I find happiness by helping animals and being a voice for things without a voice. And I get really nice fan mail. And guys, I'm not ignoring you. I really do get overwhelmed. So I have one, Sarah from Oklahoma. Sarah says that she's- uh, Well, that's private. You don't read that. That's secret I know, shit. I'm just gonna give you uh, the rundown. <laughs> Sarah, she says, Merry Christmas. And she says she's become a reptile lover, partly by watching my channel and a few other channels. And she also just recently found Dingo from my collaboration with Dingo. And we love Dingo. Merry Christmas, Dingo. They don't celebrate Christmas in South Africa. Whatever the hell you go, you, they crawl out <laughs> of the bushes and go, oh, you know, and then that's find what a, they do on a black mamba or something. No, I'm not. Wow. My brain isn't there. So anyways, Sarah doesn't keep reptiles, which is really cool. She's a dog lover. And uh, she feels that she uh, is very good at talking canine. And uh, she then identifies with myself and my 
idea of reptiles and how I interact and how I talk about things. And uh, she had a lot of really kind words. But Sarah in Oklahoma, it is very nice to have something like this. And I'm, I am touched and I uh, do value the fact that you're not even a reptile keeper. But now you love reptiles, you're a voyeur, and you're possibly even thinking about maybe even getting a reptile. That's really good. But I just want to say I appreciate people like this. It smells good too. She's you perfume all over it. Yeah, she likes you. All right, guys, send fan mail to Kevin. So tons of it. Send weird stuff. That's it. Oh, and no more sending Donnie bikinis. Yeah, they send me far worse than bikinis. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and you found some information useful. Uh, maybe it'll actually help you save one of your animals, which is really my intent. But as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Please join our Twitch audience especially for Friday nights when Donnie goes over some of the filming that he did during the week. And you can kind of see some of the things that go on behind the scenes and the weirdness that we are. But uh, I really appreciate you guys' support. You guys are really helping us with the channel. Uh, the more interest we're getting and the more response to the videos, the more I'm inclined to actually do these videos because I'm a super busy guy. We're really struggling with the COVID things. We're desperately trying to find a manager for NERD. It's it's tough times, and uh, but we still have a lot of things going on here, and Donnie keeps chasing me around with the camera. As always, Donnie's drawing flies, and don't forget to follow Evil Morph God on Instagram, as well as New Reptile on Instagram, Donnie Rapture on Instagram, so you can watch him play Naked Dude Hunter. Shut up. <laughs> I like, get away from me, Donnie, you're drawing flies. I do like that one. <laughs> but yeah, anyways. You join us on the Twitch live streams. Uh, most of the time, you've been doing it for three or four weeks in a row. I have really been trying to make sure at 8 o'clock I join the, the uh, Friday night Twitch stream talking to some people. We have such a really great core audience. You guys are great. We can like goof around with you and joke around with you and you guys really like it. We have people like always there. They're so loyal to us and it is great. You guys are just, you're kind. Jamila tipped $686. Thank you Donnie for everything you do. We wanted to show our appreciation and help as much as we can. Love, Jamila, Phoenix, Alice, Love, Fly, Kaju, Jess, Norman. Did, did you guys all like send money to Jay Muller? What if Jay Muller just f screwed all of you guys and she just pieced the f and we never heard from her again? That'd be a metal ass move, wouldn't it? That'd be the longest con ever. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on!